buddy of mine made this, and I just put it into the software, so it's nice. the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> Welcome to the Ride Balance Podcast. Thank you guys for making it out here. Uh, we just met, what, three days ago? Yeah, three days ago on Rider Share. On Rider Share. You yeah. rented my bike, dropped it off, and I was like, you look cool. And yeah. you're like, you kind of <laughs> look cool, but your bike's cool. And Well, you came in hot, and I was like, this guy can ride. He's got a cool bike. There and it is. Yeah, kicked it off. And now we're, we're sitting here. And yeah. then the story you told me about him was hilarious. Yes. You know, about, you know, you guys were friends, then you married your, your sister. 100%. Yeah, you, yeah. Didn't, you didn't say it like that, but you know what? <laughs> is it PG, this podcast? No, you could say dick, <laughs> pussy, snot, ass, whatever oh, you want. Fantastic. Then, yeah. yeah. Okay, then you're in the right yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're definitely <laughs> in the right place. Yeah. Very good. Let me adjust your mic. Again, yeah. the, the closer you are to the mic, the better. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Actually, let's get to it. You're from South. You rented my bike. You you've been traveling. You just uh, came from Sturgis. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, you're originally from South Africa. Yep. How how has America been treating you? And and how the fuck was Sturgis? Oh, you know what? Like, I mean, it's actually insane. You cannot describe all the. Pi- I've taken so much content, um, and fit pictures of everything I've seen, but you cannot tell people the experience you've done. Um, it's just visually. It's, it's it's there's not there's no words. No, there isn't. And um, yeah, the it's it's endless. Like the, the the visuals, the experience. It's just one of the things you just got to do it. You know, I can tell you all day about my experience. It's been freaking the, the amazing. Roads, the roads, the roads, the, the people we met. I mean, we ended up in the small little town called uh, Rand. In is it Wyoming? It is in Wyoming. Yeah, and it's a yes. small little bar. On the side of, I think there's got like population of 100 people. <laughs> and they call it the Yacht Club in Rand. And the guy created this bar called the Yacht Club so that when he travels the world, he can become a private member in these other yacht clubs. But there's no water nearby. There's no, there's no yachts. <laughs> no <laughs> yachts. There's no yachts. Yeah. yeah. So the experience has been absolutely phenomenal. And um, yeah, I just don't know how to describe, but just you got to do it. What, what are your highlights? Well, what, well okay, let's, let's clarify. We got to do what? Which part? The, the writing? What are we talking about? You know what? I think the, the, for me, obviously for the being in this business, going to Sturgis was huge. You know, meeting all the who's who in the industry. They're all there in one location, especially coming so far. Um, it's great for me to have, you know, the guys from SNS, um, from Drag Specialties, all of those companies all in one location. So my whole idea was like the writing's going to be cool. I'm really excited, but my main focus was to business, network. But then we... I got so <laughs> caught up in the riding and I just wanted to take my time and just absorb America and just see, like, this is living. You know, you got two wheels on you, you got this amazing scenery and you actually don't know where you're going to land next. Um, so the whole experience leading up to Sturges was just phenomenal. And so, so let's talk about the trip. Uh, you leave South Africa and then you fly, what, what, you know, so, the yeah. logistics of it. So we left Cape Town, um, and then we flew to uh, where did Doha. We, uh, Doha, which is about a nine-hour flight. Yeah, Qatar. Qatar. Beautiful and then airport. we flew to LA, which was a 16-hour flight. Yeah. Um, Qatar and Airway. Qatar as well. Qatar, yeah. And then we flew to Denver, uh, which is about two hours, and then met our buddies there, and we all met up there with our bikes in Denver and how left. M- how many people? There were four of us. Nice. Yeah, so we all grew up together. I got my, uh, my brother-in-law with me, which is a great experience, and then my two good mates um, that I've known for probably a good 15, 20 years. And yeah, we just... Whose uh, idea? So actually, it was a funny story. We've been talking about it. I mean, it's been a goal of mine for the last 14 years, but it's always like next year, next year. And my buddy Reg, uh, who owns a few nightclubs at, uh, in South Africa, and we ride together, and we kept talking about it. And then I was like, you know what, this year, is just, this is not going to work. There's just too much happening. He goes, but what if I die? <laughs> then, yeah. <laughs> then he's like, pretty extreme. Yeah, a bit extreme. But if the world ends, yeah. yeah. And I was like, you know what? Shit. If if you die, we're not going to stay just together. So fine. I just went right online, booked uh, accommodation, just so that I had the solid. Now I have to do it. I've spent my money. Now I've got a hotel. So that's how it started. That's crazy. Yeah, six I mean, months. We ago. booked that accommodation in February. February, yeah. And it was the only accommodation available. Yeah, yeah there was actually February. Yeah, Ten yeah, miles out of stages. Yeah, there was huh? nothing available. <laughs> so what you do? <laughs> camp out. No, we found a, a, a motel called the Iron Horse Inn and it, it ended up becoming such a rad uh, little pit stop where you parked your bikes right in front of the hotel, had a cool bar there. So it just worked out perfectly. And they had a bus from, from that inn going into center, the hub of Sturgis. That's beautiful. And then from there, buses were going out to like the full throttle, uh, what is it? Full the throttle. Saloon. Saloon. Yeah. 
um, blue uh, buffalo chip. So everything just went out from there. Nice. So it was just very well organized. And, and, and you guys uh, obviously rented motorcycles for that. What were you riding? Yes. I was riding a Heritage Softail. Nice. Uh, is there a certain reason you uh, selected that bike? Um, I wanted a road glide, um, but that was the only one available. Yeah. We needed bags, and we needed... Um, am I too far away? No, no. I needed um, bags on the back and a, and a shield, windshield, and that bike came up. It, was a, it, wasn't, it wasn't my first choice. But it actually turned out to be an incredible bike. They're, pre- they're pretty good. Uh, amazing. Long rides because yeah. they're, they're mounted to the frame and they're counterbalanced. So you don't get that yeah. much vibration, uh, you know, when you're at stops or yeah. you, you don't get as numb as much. And it was a 114, so it was brand new. It's a type oh, of even 20, better. 20, 2021. Even better. The guy shut himself when I returned it and he saw the miles. <laughs> 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 like, I think he took that uh, <laughs> endless miles option off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Unlimited mileage. Yeah. He even went yeah. and did a check the tread and... Yeah. Oh my all god! Sorts of yeah. Things, yeah. yeah, so it was a wild ride. I mean, uh, just riding through all. We were doing, what were you riding? I was riding a road glide, 2013 road glide. Nice. And I kitted it out like yours as well. You know, you had uh, we had Vantenheim pipe. You had a 21 inch uh, Allen Ness front wheel rotors, uh, ape hangers, uh, settlement seat. So nice. it was felt like it was the my legend, bike. Legend yeah. suspension. Oh, legend suspension, front and rear. Nice. So straight away it felt like my bike. Right. So I was like, yes, let's go. Because um, initially I had this old, not an old, the new uh, street bob with ape hangers and no saddlebags because there was nothing no available. Bags, stock, stock pipes. Like, yeah. Oh, and I was like, but I've committed. So that's going to be my ride. And literally three days before I flew out, this popped up and I canceled that ride and I booked this one. I was so stoked. You, you, you're so excited and, and passionate about this journey that you had. What what did you learn? What are some of the things? I mean, there's so many things you learned. Yeah. I, every, yeah. Everything's a fucking experience. You, yeah. you learned a new country. You learned yeah. traveling's fucking cool and yeah. it's a luxury. But what 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 what, what would you what did you learn? What would you tell yourself five five year you know, five year old Alex? Yeah. Alex Bro. Like you know, you know what? I think it's I like it sounds so crazy, but in these two weeks I've grown grown so much in my head like of what I want moving forward in my life like where I want to take my company my family um after seeing you know in South Africa we got everything but our clientele our market is so small the one thing I love about America is if you can dream it it's possible you know you got you can build it it, yeah in South Africa we can do the same that's what I'm doing my business but it's just here's like limitless and it just gave me this idea of like you know anything is possible and just keep on if you want to do it just go for it and it just reignited that energy i have and why i started my company and yeah now just the one thing i've learned i think is just chase your dreams you know live in the moment um the most craziest thing that popped up is you know there's two dates on your tombstone uh and a dash make the dash count make the dash count yeah. yeah So now I think just living it and living life and enjoying the moment. I, I, I saw one of those posts on TikTok. Uh, I think it was Denzel Washington. Talk, I, I can't word it how he did. But yeah. It was something along the lines that uh, he says, imagine you get to your deathbed and, and you were surrounded by all the things you could have been and you could have done. And now these spirits are looking at you and saying, hey, man, you could have, you could have brought us out to the world, but you didn't. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And it's like, Wow. Uh, another thing, talking about the, the excitement, that, that's, that you're right. There's a lots of opportunity. You can be whoever you want. You can do whatever you want. But it's always interesting that I find it's always people from other countries that come to America and they're like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> they'll give you a loan and, and they'll assist you and they'll pay the bills and I could start my dream business yeah. and I could be an actor. You know, like people come, outsiders come, immigrants come. And it's it, it's 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 a gold mine. Yeah. Everything is a fucking gold mine. Yeah. And then the Americans that were raised here, you're like, what are you doing, dude? You're 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 working a, a shitty job. Yeah. You're not chasing a dream. You have no goals. You have no vision. Mm. Why is that? You know. And then my conclusion is, is, it's it's there's a system in place for the people of America of hey, yeah. you need to work. You need to be a good employee. You need. It's like a brainwash. Yeah. So that that that's that's one thing that I that I noticed a lot. And then the same thing, the traveling. You know, everybody that comes here, I remember uh, I was I was working a little bit with the Eagle Riders. Are you? Yeah, familiar? I'm familiar with Eagle yeah. Riders, yeah. So there was a- The tour, rental agency. The ra- yeah. rental agency, one of the largest ones. I was there, and they were receiving a tour coming from Germany that came from Route 66. It was a 14-day ride, and it was all these German men, you know, like big, giant monsters, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and as they're rolling in, and they stop the bikes and turn it <laughs> off, the, the, like, they were so fucking emotional. And, and one of them was crying. 
And I'm like, yo, like, you good? <laughs> He's like, this is a dream come true yeah. to yeah. do all roots. I used to have an Elvis Presley poster with his Harley and, you know, and I did it. I did it. And, yeah. and then once again, my, my point to that is, is that, you know, how many Americans I, I was reading statistics a few years ago. 70% of the people that live in East L.A., in East L.A., right here, have never been to the ocean. It's crazy. Oh. 74% <laughs> of Americans have never been to the ocean. Yeah. You have two coasts. 70% of Americans haven't been. You know how many people haven't even left their hometown? I, it, it blows my mind. Like, So I used to study in Florida. I went to MMI, um, Motorcycle Mechanics Institute. Nice. And so I, re I touched base with all my mates. I said, hey, guys, I'm coming back to the States. I'd love to reconnect. And... Out of my, let's say, the 15 buddies, I'm the only one that's been to Sturgis. And I'm like, like looking on, I'm like, that's what? so crazy. <laughs> I just, I mean, I jumped on a plane, I traveled across half the world, and I've done it. Yeah, you had to fly to two other countries before you got, yeah. Yeah, and they live like eight-hour ride, some of them away, and they've never done it. And I'm just like, it yeah, blows my mind. But it makes it that much more special, I guess. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think the only way I can kind of explain this is, or my assumption is it's like living next to the, the beach. Yeah. You know, you live next Tomorrow. to the beach, you never go to the beach. Tomorrow. Because yeah, you know, it's there, right? Yeah. And then one day, five years down the road, you move, and you're like, I fucking miss the beach. And it's like, <laughs> honey, we never even went to the beach, you know? So I, I, th I think it's just one of those things that we think – there's always tomorrow. Yeah. And, and that's what like being present is all about. You know, being present is like, forget tomorrow. Yeah. We're, we're not guaranteed that. I think that's as well that ignited the trip. Like I said, when my mate said, what if I die? Yeah. And it's very dramatic, but you know, it's, it's, it's at the end of the day, we always wait for things. You wait, oh, tomorrow, do I do this? And then you look back and you haven't accomplished what you, yeah. you you're wanted. You're older, your, yeah. your body's not functioning the same. So, uh, w w what did you learn from this whole trip? The things that stuck, again, I know there's so many, but... Yeah, so many. Um, just to take, yeah, just to live live in the moment. I mean, just to take in all that, that scenery. The, the scenery on the way from uh, through Wyoming and Yellowstone was incredible. And usually when you're riding, you know, you focus on the road. You focused on the cars in front of you. And we were lucky enough to have hardly any traffic at all. Most of the time it was just the four of us. Yeah. And uh, on these, that, on these it, touring bikes. It's kind of scary, no? It's sometimes. incredible. Yeah. And then and you've, we've all had um, um, cruise control. So you can put that on. So you can, you know, and you can really just sit back, ride, and also enjoy the scenery, the view, the, view, the camaraderie with, with us. And um, it's like a little brotherhood. And it's, yeah. it sounds cheesy, but it, no, do, it doesn't you, you sound form that, nobody that, listens to that this brotherhood podcast. That and, um, <laughs> <laughs> nobody. <laughs> And, and, like and it's great. And we yeah. spent uh, we spent seven, eight, no, almost ten days together. Yeah, yeah, on the ten on days the bike. together in the on the, on the bike. Four guys in a hotel room. In, in the hotel <laughs> room, <laughs> my snoring killed everyone. Yeah. But other than that, we all got on. You Not snore once. now. <laughs> <laughs> Not get once did we get a did we have an issue with each other. We just it was just the bonding was was unbelievable. You know, you, you, th this is so random, and she's gonna get mad at me right now. But I didn't say it. I'm just, you know, power phrasing. You guys heard of this Andrew Tate guy? I have not. No, no. So there's this Andrew Tate guy that's been blowing up as a as a a, a male coach, advisor, and stuff like that. And he says such ridiculous things that that are so funny and true, but more funny, you know. But like, you know, he, he's like, do you know a man's time? Do you know how much time of a man's been wasted arguing with a woman? You know how much time that's taken away from a man's life in life, you know? Yeah. And uh, the reason I bring it up is because a few days ago, I was having a dinner with uh, my brother-in-law, and we were with our, you know, one of our wives. And my brother-in-law says, look, I love traveling, honey, to his wife. He goes, I love traveling, but with my friends, you know? And she's like, mm. he goes, there's no worrying. We can sleep in the one hotel room. We could sleep on the floor. We could sleep on the dirt. There's just no problems. Yeah. It, it has nothing to do. Yes, we could do the nice things, but I don't have to worry about people's, you know, carrying makeup or heels or this or that or the other. Yeah. And it, it's just a different experience when, when guys, you know, travel or whatever, any, any group travels. Yeah. And know? it's important to do both. And like, like you got to do just, both. Yeah. And it was just easy. You know, I got good, uh, Four good mates just hanging out, living life together. And whatever life and throws at you, you're going to deal with it. Exactly. Yeah. And I think also detaching yourself from your normal life. Like, there's actually no worries. Like, you know, you've set everything up. This is your time to just focus on yourself. Uh, reflect on your year, what's happened in life, what you want to achieve in life. So I think it's like, because you're not on the time on the bike. So you've got so much time to just 
You know, think, think in, your, and, in your own head. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because the music will be good for an hour. Yeah. And then you're like, that's enough music. music. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, but still, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, you just reflect and, you you know, I mean, there's certain things in life that uh, that have challenged you or that you want to challenge. And I, I figured so much out on this trip that um, I don't, I don't you, money can't buy this. Like, it's it's experience oh. that – that uh, that. And you could do this forever, and it would be a different experience. Each 100%. And every time. Yeah. It's like motorcycles. You know, we can all buy the same streak light. Yeah. And a year later, yours is going to be different, and yours is going to be different, and mine's mm. going to be different. Yeah. I, I, I'm very happy for you guys on this journey, and congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, yes. Let's talk about uh, your business. Uh, how, how, how did you start your business, and what do you into? How do you introduce yourself? Okay. So, yeah, my name is Alex, obviously. <laughs> um, so, I started off uh, in, so I've always grown up on motorcycles. I've loved anything with an engine. Um, grew up on a farm fixing my own bikes and an opportunity arised that... And, but how did you get into that? Your, your dad or...? No, so actually my stepdad. So my older brothers at the time, they all had dirt bikes and uh, I got handed this KX65 when I was, I think, six six years old and I, the passion just bit, eh? Like I'd always tinker it. I could never fix anything. I always broke yeah. it. <laughs> but I always wanted to learn how and I just eventually taught myself how to work on the bikes and on the farm you had to fix everything yourself. Right. Um, so that's when the passion bit. And then a couple of years later, when I got older, um, one of my buddies told me about this college in America that you can actually become a professional technician for Harley Davidson. Like that sounds fucking amazing. Right? Yeah. I mean, I get to ride a Harley. It's, it's, it's amazing hearing it here. Yeah. But like being from Cape Town, like what? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And at that time, Harleys, I mean, I knew one person that owned a Harley. That's, that's how it was. I mean, if you had a Harley, you were very successful person, a doctor, a lawyer at the time, and you'd never saw them in people's garages. So where I heard that you can do this, I was like, no way. So anyway, I sent on my details, I got accepted, and at 18, I jumped on a plane, moved to Florida, and that's where I studied for Harley-Davidson, Honda as well, and then um, because of uh, the way South Africa is, I wasn't sure how the motorcycle industry was, so I took uh, diesel mechanics as well, just as a backup. And hanging out there, uh, one of my buddies who actually did the trip with knew Russell Mitchell from Exile Cycles. Nice. And I ended up getting an internship there for a year. And that's what actually opened my mind to custom bikes. And I always thought everything was manufactured by machines. And that's where I learned that, you know, literally you can dream it, you can fabricate out of your hands, you just need to teach yourself the skills. Yeah. And that's when I started teaching myself how to metal shape, uh, operate the lays, the welding. And then I moved back to South Africa uh, 10 years ago and I started Stu's Customs. And it's just evolved now from a single uh, car garage to a, a 500 meter square workshop where Holy shit. we've got six employees, a full CNC machine. Um, we we specialize in Harley Davidson's servicing and, and customizing. But now we've just finished an Indian. Um, I've just built a bike uh, for a guy in the States uh, with the uh, R9T as the base. Um, so, yeah, it's grown into... That's, well. that, that's the one on the website, right? Uh, no, that's uh, that's the R18. And there's another R90, but I'm doing another one nice. um, that we're launching. Beautiful. Um, so when I get back, I'll finish it off and we'll probably launch in the next three weeks. So who's running the shop now? Um, I've got an awesome team, luckily. So um, I've got my head technician, Chris, who's running Shout the shop. Shout out to Chris. Yeah. Chris! <laughs> <laughs> and then Magdalene, who does is my personal assistant. Another shout out yeah. to Woo! the whole crowd. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very fortunate. I've got an amazing team that's actually like running my shop, so I can do this and uh, enjoy the experience as well as get and more it, business. And, and it's well deserved. And it's well deserved. What, what did you see on the road that you're going to apply to the shop or warehouse or what? What did you see at Sturgis? Because I'm sure fucking ideas just pop yeah. in all over the place. Like fuck. I, wow. I need to sit down and just write because right now it's like it's just it's like a glass that's just with a tap open and it's just overflowing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. But it's like the growth. I think uh, my next thing is expansion. Like how do I tap into get the world to know about Stu's Customs. Yeah. Um, uh, like, I'm very proud of what I've achieved, but it's nowhere where I want Stu's Customs to be. And I uh, just want to create, like, I want everyone to have a part of what we stand for. And because I love motorcycles so much, I take so much passion in everything we fabricate. Like, every time I build a bike for a client, I say, you know, it's not just a bike. I said, you got money, you can go buy anything you want. Right. But it's a, it's a experience. Um, it's a bond that I form it's with a every- It's com a com commodity, not a commodity. Uh, fuck, I just blanked <laughs> on the word. Uh, when you group some in, like you, you um, ah, God damn it. 
Yeah, camaraderie. Anyways, camaraderie. camaraderie. Yeah, camaraderie. Yeah. Yeah. Camaraderie. Yeah. camaraderie. There you go. Yeah, and I'm just. I think I'm adding like a letter there, but yeah. <laughs> I'm good at that. <laughs> and it's like a part of myself because, like, every bike, you know, you cut yourself, you need stitches, you're bleeding. So it's a lifestyle. It is. And I saw them, and because sometimes you know, they're like, "Oh, that's a bit crazy to spend that money on a motorcycle." I said, "You're not just buying a motorcycle." I said, "If you just want that, you can go to a shop and buy one with a dealer." Yeah. Every time I create a bike, you're buying a piece of me because I've blood, like this blood that's gone into it. Literally, there's DNA. Yeah. 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 Um. So yeah, I mean, the 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 way I wanted. Okay. So like I was like kind of feeling like I got to um, a plateau, and now going to Sturgis, it's just like, like now I'm like, okay, let's regroup. What are we going to do? Let's restructure. What's the next step for Stu's Customs internationally? Because um, the market is only so big in South Africa. Um, and I want my company to be bigger than just Africa. Um, so I think the next step is to kind of take it. Expand. To expand, yeah. Franchise? Franchise? Expand? That is, that's my next idea is, you know, to get to be more involved in America. So look at maybe opening like a small little branch here that I move out here and because you guys have shows all the time. What's happening? Well, I was going to ask, do you guys have shows over there? And and if not, would that help you, you know, brand your name? Yeah, do well, a show here, do yeah. a show in Europe, do a show in South Africa? That's pretty much what I'm thinking is uh, like do a world tour in a sense because um, a lot of my bikes I actually export to Europe. So um, most of my clients are from either France UK, I've got a lot of bikes. Uh, Germany, um, I'm sending one out to Portugal, um, one to Mauritius. So the majority of my bikes are exported yeah. um, because if you convert it, uh, like a fully, the, the, the rand to the dollars, it's, it's quite scary. It's uh, 17 rand gets you $1. So wow. the exchange rate, it's quite difficult. So once you start customizing your bike, it's- It, it doesn't just, make sense. No, it doesn't. You spend three times uh, the price on your bike that you purchase for. Yeah. So and also the problem back home is that we have a very small niche of like-minded people. Yeah, right? and it's very small. So if doing what Alex does, I mean, I've got a niche clientele with the bakery, and his clientele are even smaller than that. Yeah. And you know, you can break it down to almost like a thousand people if you're lucky. Yeah. So you've got like Where here, you got millions. Yeah. yeah. Of like-minded people. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a melting pot of people yeah. of yeah. the yeah. world exactly. of. Uh, uh, I, I don't know why you said bakery and as soon as you said bakery I'm thinking is there a subscription service for bakery like like could you do that for a business where a business says hey you know here's 200 bucks a month and you know bring us you know you know subscriptions you, yeah. you get a delivery of bread you get a delivery that's great and you get you, you know because subscriptions it's all about subscriptions now yeah you know uh, Eagle Riders as a matter of fact they were on the podcast uh, I spoke to Chris McIntyre and it was interesting because I interviewed him in the middle of the pandemic. And he's like, fuck, man, nobody's traveling. Like, yeah. we're fucked, you know. Like, and, and I was out of town and blah, blah, blah. I get back to the shop. I'm looking at our account. We have money. And I'm like, where the fuck is this money coming from? Like, this doesn't yeah. even make sense. And it was a subscription service they had started in 2015. And it was just people putting into a subscription, yeah. you know. And that's that got them through a very difficult time. Because just in LA, I, th I think they have a warehouse that has over 5,000 bikes. Yeah, it's crazy. Jeez. I went on, yeah. Just, just I mean, well, th they're yeah. bigger than that, but there's Jeez. just one warehouse yeah. with 5,000 bikes stacked. They're like stacked on, they have forklifts, it's like a three rows. And like, they were just sitting there for months. They were just sitting there. Sure. And then you run into the problem where, you know, they're only rented X amount of times in the year. Yeah. And then you have a pandemic and they're not even doing that. Like, you know, but anyways, a subscription is continuous business. You're you're wasting less food because you kind of know what to yeah. make on top of those orders. Yeah. I don't know. That's just, like I said, it just popped up. So. We were looking at sort of things like that getting through the pandemic. Um, but we managed to do like home deliveries and all those sort of things. Survival packs. Survival packs. Yeah. That's awesome. Because it was like a a lot, uh, zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Oh yeah. Literally. How I, I gotta ask. How, how did how, how was the pandemic with you guys out there? Oh, it was crazy. I mean, we sh I mean, we shut down like proper. It felt like a, a, a apocalypse. I mean, for the the government said for what was it a month that you can't we go anywhere for three weeks, and then it ended up being almost two months. And then some some companies two years. I mean, if you were in like his no, business, L LA was LA was closed. Really, there was no traffic. It was ghost town. I, I was still driving around, but yeah. there was nothing. And then I was like, I'm going to get fucking pulled over. Yeah. I'm going to go to jail or some <laughs> yeah, shit. That's, that's what it was like back home. Yeah. You, could only, you could only go out if you needed to do shopping. Essential, yeah. Essential shopping. Yeah. We managed to get an essential license and bake uh, for charity. So we were baking um, about 100 loaves a day for the homeless. Um, they put, they gathered all the guys off the street and put them into these encampments. 
Yeah. And then but a lot of them broke out. <laughs> but um, we fed them, we gave them loaves of bread and they turned them into sandwiches and soups. And so there's a lot of That's uh, restaurants that couldn't operate who <laughs> did that. Yeah. So they got their team together and then they would go and do soup kitchens and do everything for charity, looking for after the homeless. So we managed to do that and then also do our survival packs. Um, and with the certificate, all our, our staff had to have the certificates on them at all times. If they got pulled over by the cops, they had to show them. And it was a whole rigmarole. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we managed, that's how we managed to survive as well. So they were literally survival packs for us as well as for the customers. How and we got a little tuk tuk, which is like a little, um, you know, tuk tuk, a three wheeler, mm -hmm. little three wheeler. They have them in um, Bali or in Thailand, those little taxis. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's got a Vespa. Yeah, it's got like it's yes, got a regular steering wheel, motorbike. but it's got like a little hood over it. Yes. and three you need, wheels. You need a motorcycle license for it. Yeah. So really, we did, yes. Wow. You know, well, back home you do. <laughs> um, so we just delivered breads and stuff with that with that little thing. That doesn't um, hold much. I managed. It's got quite a big. No, it does. It's yeah, like and the, the back yeah, you the back, fit, you yeah. Fit like two people in the back, right? Because it's so like the one this, this one's converted into like a little delivery little van, little nice. truck. It's got a five hundred cc diesel engine. Oh, and a gearbox bigger than the engine. Yeah, yeah I, I was in Mumbai. And you can I wheel saw, it. I saw all those things. Yeah. And then, and then in Mumbai, you would see uh, five people on a scooter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With chickens and... <laughs> With chickens. They take riding to the next level, eh? That, that's, that's... It's crazy because in America, you know, everybody everybody here is like... The people that don't ride, and everybody has a story like, hey, you know, like, people die. It's dangerous. Yeah, blah, blah, yeah. Blah. You know, and, and my grandfather would say it. The only requirement to die is to be alive. You know, because, yeah. like, anything could fucking happen. Yeah, true. <laughs> but, um... My point, oh, my point is how big writing is in the world. Yeah. Because in America, people are so paranoid. But, like, if you go to South America, it's all scooters and bikes and dirt bikes. You go to India, same thing, parts yeah. in China. Like, everywhere, it's it, it's a big deal. It's a it's a way of transportation. It's not, uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, 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 uh, South Africa's actually blown up, especially with the delivery servicing. So now uh, we got Uber Eats at home. And that's, that's run with motorcycles? Yeah, so it's delivering with yeah. all your food. So whatever you order, your groceries or anything, is done by uh, motorcycles or little scooters. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the foreigners, that's what they do to like get their foot in the door to, to earn money to support the family. Yeah. So I always laugh. I say, because they always come drop off our dinner on a Sunday or something when we order in. And no matter what the weather is, they're riding. So I'm like, those scooter guys are true bikers because yeah. they will get on and they will ride through a damn hailstorm to get your food to you. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it is big in South it's Africa now. It's blowing up. And it's like a little community that started. So you'll see them when they're waiting for their order. There's like 10, 15 of them sitting under the tree, just like shooting the shit, talking and hanging out. Yeah, so gambling. Yeah. Maybe gambling their money <laughs> made, <laughs> playing dice yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, so it's created a whole other subculture of biking. And it's actually quite fun, like it's quite amazing to see and uh, how it's grown. Yeah, it, it, you, but that's a valid point. You know, you, th those people that ride in like crazy conditions, like those are true bikers. Like, yeah, yeah. In California, we, we only get like 11 months of riding. Yeah. You know, <laughs> is that it? it? Yeah, 11 and a half, you know, you know, but it rains twice, you know, in the year. Yeah. But uh, but those people that do those crazy conditions, it's yeah. insane. Like the snow, mud, you know, hail, yeah. whatever the case, floods, you're, they're, they're riding. Yeah. Like yeah. the craziest thing, that the craziest place that I like to ride in LA it's just an experience. It's San Francisco. Because, you, you, like, there's just so many hills that you'll get to a red light and you're just kind of, like, you know, hanging, hanging back. Yeah. Like, Fuck. This is, <laughs> you know, and you're holding the back brake with your foot instead yeah. of this. You can give it gas. And, you know, it, like, it, it, it's a fun experience. And the bike sounds amazing through the city. I'm sure. Yeah, just bouncing just off all the walls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just sounds beautiful. <laughs> so that, that that's always been a fun place to ride. But, man, our weather's perfect. Yeah, we'll actually. I mean, this is hot. We're complaining right now. This is nice. I mean, yeah, well, we've in winter at the moment. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back home it's cold and raining. How how is uh, South Africa's weather and, and you know out there in Cape Town? Like, is it you get four seasons? Yeah, we can I'm have four seasons in, in a day. Yeah, it's, no way. Yeah, yeah, it's quite crazy. Like Cape Town's, it's it's actually really awesome. We're very fortunate. Um, I mean, you can be at the beach hanging out, and then in. 40 minutes, you can be at the wine farm drinking wine. Or if you want to take an hour ride, you can be in the desert. So it's like, it's it's so quick to be in so many different uh, seasons, if you wish, um, in a day. Um, it's 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 an awesome city to check out. What's the population? Yo, I, could, I wouldn't. Shit. I, I have no idea. No? My, my geography skills and all that stuff. I wish terrible. I had a Jamie. Jamie, search that, you know. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Even yeah. a couple yeah. of million. <laughs> hey, Siri, what's the population in South Africa? <laughs> 
population of South Africa was 60 million 142,978. That's a lot of people. Sure. Yeah. So there's definitely over a million in, in Cape Town. Well, more of them need to buy Harleys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was disgusting. Is, yeah, but there's only about a thousand that one. R- yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. 5,000. And then out of the 5,000 actually ride Harleys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, but what's the most popular bikes you see out there? Do you see like a lot of the adventures? The GS, yeah, the GS 1200s. I love it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. If I so had to just have one bike and you, you'd you have to. Yeah. Um, our terrain, our roads, like in Cape Town, we, the roads are good. But as soon as you get out of Cape Town, I mean, that can get nasty potholes in the road. And, you know, suddenly it will show that's a, a tar road and it'll be gravel. Um, so if I had one motorcycle, I probably would also have a GS or maybe like the, the, the KTM. Yeah. Um, probably the would Duke be mine. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 uh, is it the 1290? The 1290. The 1290 yeah. off road, man. Yeah, or like the Multi Strata or thing, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something yeah. a little bit more. Like, but yeah, the, I think the go to bike are the, the Which GSs. is the bigger one of the Ducati? The Multi Strata or the Hyper Motor? I Hyper Motor is the one that wants to kill you. <laughs> yeah. And the Multi Strata is the more Enduro. Yeah. Enduro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I'm, all, I'm all about that. You see, because LA, LA is great, but we have shitty fucking roads, man. Yeah. Like when I go to Dubai or Qatar and, and I'm like, wow, everything's so new and yeah. nice. And when I'm flying back to LA, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Our buildings are old. Our streets are old. You know, I love it here. Yeah. But our shit's old. Yeah. And, and what I've concluded it to is in a car, like uh, if you get a mid-size SUV, yep. you know, like an X5 or something like that, that's like the awesome car to drive in LA because yeah. it takes the bumps well, yes. uh, uphill, downhill, you know, all around. And same thing, the GS for, for, for LA is just, you can ride on sidewalks, you could go up the Hollywood Hills, yeah. you could just, you know, whatever you want. It's got a handbrake as well, so you don't yeah. have to hang... Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you have but to the, like, the highway's running. Yeah, yeah. it's got the, the hold. Yeah, you double press and then yeah, yeah, double yeah. you know squeeze. Double tap. Oh, you squeeze it. You just squeeze it. Oh, okay, okay. No. Yeah, I forgot actually. Uh, the, your highways. Yeah, they're like patched and patched again. They're patched um, and patched again. Yeah, yeah. had the misses behind me and she's just like rattling away on the back seat. Yes, yeah, so the four, <laughs> the four hundred five, right? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, yeah. there's a section of the 405. But even when I'm riding, <laughs> it's like it's like three exits before Venice. It's like, yeah. and it's so fucking bad. Uh, yeah. And then there's another one on the five. Yeah, no, our roads are crazy. Is it, is it the Santa Santa Barbara Highway? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of like right before the Santa Barbara. Highway. Yeah, and um, the one section I had my missus hanging on there, and shame she was not stuck to. Yeah. You can, <laughs> Sorry, and, 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 and I had the stock seat, oh. but yeah, that's yeah, all right. My all bad. Right. My, my apologies. She's still recovering. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Yeah, because that, that that seat is uh, that seat is mean. Uh. Yeah, next time I will have more seat options and <laughs> hopefully more bikes. Too. Yeah, more bikes. I tried to get a bike. It was impossible. What, what happened? Did the guy show up on time? No, he didn't no. even get a bike. Um, I messaged, uh, I counted it, eight people. Eight people. Eight people. You should have just picked up the live wire. I didn't know <laughs> you had one. <laughs> and I couldn't get The guys were not willing to, to deliver or, uh, or respond. didn't respond. Yeah. Took three days for a response. Eventually, this one girl did say, okay, cool, I can deliver. Not a problem, I can deliver and collect. When will it suit you? And that was at 7.30 at night. We were out for dinner. 7.30 at night, she responded. I didn't see, because the writer's share should have an app. Right. The fact that you got to rely on I know, checking I know. your email. Yeah, yeah I have, I've had them on the podcast too. They were supposed and to get is that it, out. Is it, like, I don't know, maybe they need funding or whatever is it to do an app, but an app would be amazing because then you get the notification and it's instant. Instant, yeah. yeah. Having to check your emails all the time. So I didn't check my emails at dinner and I only responded to it at but Did you register your phone number? So we got American numbers. Yeah, because if you register your phone number, number that's, that's, how, that's, how, that's the only way that I'm up to date. Oh, then uh, it comes through as a SMS? Or it sends me a text message. Don't just say Alex sent me a yeah. request. Alex is asking a question. I saw that option. Okay, yeah. that would be a lot easier. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that's, that's what makes <laughs> it bearable. So the they, problem that loops you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, now we're running with different numbers. It, it's so called we, user got, error. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there you <laughs> so go. So now we're running with US numbers. And yeah. when we rented our previous bikes in Denver, we were running with the SA numbers. Got it. Um, but okay, yeah, so that is a user error. <laughs> but uh, I. But they still need an app. Yeah, yeah they, they still, still need, need an app. app. It would be a lot easier. Um, and having to log on each time and yeah, da, da, da. it's a headache. But um, so then I responded to her and said, ten o'clock would be amazing tomorrow if you could." Uh, I haven't heard nothing. Shit. Ten o'clock wasn't dude, amazing for her. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> another dude, uh, literally eight people. My, uh, my my thoughts on that is this: uh, I, I've been doing this for now. I want to say like two months. And uh, like I was telling Alex, the reason I started doing this is because uh, 
you know, I have three motorcycles and the last bike I just had to make a collection was a live wire, but I, w- I wasn't really riding it, you know, no saddlebags, yeah. uh, you know, the, 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 there is range anxiety that, that it's a true yeah. thing is what they're calling it. Yeah. And, and it's like, you're like, fuck, if I run out of charge, where and how long yeah. and now you got to get this logistics of how you're going to plan out your rides. Yes. And I was kind of overblowing it a little bit more than, than what it actually is. It holds up really good. But uh, I started doing this for two months. And at first I was like, holy fuck, you know, like this is, this is like a little bit of a business. This is pretty yeah. fucking good, you know? And, and especially with the Harley, cause it was selling, it was renting on Eagle Rider share. Uh, so they have Eagle Rider. Okay. And they have Eagle Rider share. I didn't know about that one. Which is like rider share. Yeah. You know, so the, the, the Eagle Rider bikes are stock as fuck. Yeah. But Eagle Rider share is, you know, bikes. So they have better rates okay. because they get more international people. And I was like, this is a fucking badass business. Yeah. And then my BMW started booking. Just boom, boom, boom. My GS, I have a GSA yeah. 2020. Oh, okay, fantastic. Started, bo- like all of September it's booked. You know, Amazing. Like, uh, it is, right now it's been booked for eight days. Uh, it, it started getting booked. And I'm thinking, fuck, the live wire is going to do good, right? Yeah. Live wire has been rented twice. <laughs> it's so weird. I would have thought that would have been like yeah. a big renter. But it, it's, it's, it's the BMW and the Harley. And my point was is that I'm used to the bags. I'm used to the fairing. I'm yeah. used to the windshield. I'm used to all this stuff. And this is why I never gave the live wire that much of an opportunity. Yes. And now I'm, I'm like, this is, this is fun. Like I, I rode from Studio City to the bike shed, which, how was the bike shed? Oh, it was awesome. It, you guys went to Bach? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. we met a good bunch of people. Yeah, you guys um, met Big Rob Yeah, the met victory. Yeah, lost yeah it's shit. a laugh. Yeah. Yeah, the last 48 hours was a mess, sorry. <laughs> no, no yeah, stress. Yeah. No, it was really cool. And also, the one thing is, I have not actually been riding. I, what do you mean? Like, we were supposed to get a bike um, organized. It's my bad. And... You know, then there's just logistics, and so I've I've only done I think 200 k 200 miles on your bike. So I'm so if he wasn't here and it was just you and her, you guys would be riding everywhere. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So the, the women are not the problem. No, not at it's, all. It's <laughs> it's the friends. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Third wheel. I've been it's hooching on my own. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just like you know things come up. Also meeting up with old mates, um, and then you know, you know it's also. A Podcast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Too many Negronis the night before. Yeah, it's, yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we took a Do ride. Do you guys want to drink? Have you got I, a, I have Pacificos. Have you got a, yeah, it'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah be I got awesome. Pacificos, waters, and uh, some energy drinks. I have a Pacifico. Okay, Pacifico, yes, please. Okay. But go ahead. Um, so yeah, we took a ride up, uh, made a bark. Uh, it was cool to see the shop. Um, I've only known them in France. I actually didn't know they had a setup in, in LA. Uh, Davidson. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Good bottle opener. <laughs> Um, so it was cool, like just hanging out with people, um, like-minded. Uh, everyone was super friendly. And then we took a ride up to the hills. I'm not sure which one because you guys got thousands. Uh, was it Santa Monica Hills or? I just followed. I was just again. <laughs> PC off PCH. No, um, if you kept going down, uh, if you went through to um, where, where was the the shops in in Burbank. So it was within Burbank. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so we went to the top there to some uh, lookout point. And By the houses, right? Yeah. And it was quite funny. It was like, yeah. it's obviously quite a... Towards a the golf course side or, or the house size? Or the to house. the house. Okay, and it's it. like a very uh, look upscaled area. Um, nice houses yeah, and yeah. all the people dressed to the nines with walking their little handbag dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And you could just see this old man's like, what is happening? All these bikers. Because we pulled into this parking lot that they closed off. So obviously they didn't right. want people pulling in with their cars because um, they put these big boulders. It was like Rolls Royce only or something. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. And this guy just had his dog and he was just looked completely like, get out of my neighborhood. <laughs> um, but it was brilliant. So yeah, I rolled in there, hanged out, took a few pictures and then uh, headed down to the bike shed, uh, which is awesome because I've been to the one in London. Yeah. Um, so it was cool to see the one here. Yeah, that, that they, they went through they went through hell because they were building it during the pandemic. Oh, jeez, of course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the last three years, it's just money, 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 money. And they just opened it up four months ago, five months ago. Oh, really? Yeah. And how long, and how long ago did they actually start with it? Uh, over three years ago. Yeah, that's a, over three, can kill a project, a big eh? fucking investment. Like yeah. They, they put money. Did you guys check out the members lounge? Uh, no, we didn't check the members oh. line, lounge out. I'm, I'm, I feel so guilty I didn't make that. Well, I'm definitely going to be back uh, LA again soon. Oh, man, um, looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah, like I would, I didn't do as much riding as I wanted and I kind of be- beat myself up about it. Um, but it's just crazy how the world works. Like um, I rented the bike, now I'm here on the podcast and, you know, everything happens for a reason. And now your story is documented forever and ever. Yeah, ever. exactly, yeah. exactly. So, you know, it's it's there's so many memories to be made. Um, but yeah, it just forces me to come back 
And because I really want to do the whole PCH to San Francisco. and It's the most beautiful ride you'll ever see in your life. Oh, God, it, it, It's the most beautiful ride. Uh, most people, when they go to San Francisco, they take the five. Boring. Uh, it's like five hours. The and, inland. Uh, yeah, the inland. Yes. Just, uh, yeah. It's just Straight. boring. Yeah, I did that last time in a car. Yeah, yeah, when you go PCH, it's it's nine hours. Okay. Okay, it's, 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 it's a lot longer. So you got to start really early. It's better to start like at 5 a.m., but it is just unlimited amounts of beauty, and you're you're, you're like this is not even America. Like like what is this? I think I was a bit ambitious because I thought we would be able to hang out in LA for a few days, right to uh, uh, San Francisco in I think was it two and a half days and back, yeah. <laughs> and hang out. So if you do it that way, no, it's going to be hard. Yeah. Your best bet is to like come to LA, eat a burger. Uh, right out to like Big Sur yeah. or, or Monterey County maybe. And then once in Monterey or Carmel, beautiful yeah. area. Then from there, stay there, go to San Francisco, uh, fucking get, I don't know, uh, the, the seafood out there is fucking amazing. The yeah. Italian food out there is amazing. Uh, get some food and then come right back. Okay. And how far is it to Carmel? Like, uh, Carmel yeah. Carmel is going to be, um, it'll probably be like five hours. Okay, It'll probably be five, five. Because from Carmel to San Francisco, it's about... It's, I don't know, I want to say, shit, from Santa Cruz, it's 90, and then 90 miles, so 90 minutes, and then from Santa Cruz to Monterey, it's about yeah. 40. Okay. It's about like two and a half. So Carmel's kind of like in the middle. Yeah. But if you plan it out, there's just so much stuff to see. You know, there's the, there's the I forgot the name of it, but it's a pink hotel. Yeah. Old school, a lot of history. There's the Hearst Castle, which is beautiful. Big Sur, which is beautiful. Carmel, Monterey, yeah. Santa Cruz, Capitola, Aptos. It's like, ah! That, that's the thing. Is There's just like, <coughs> there's never <laughs> enough time. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's just like endless amount of uh, places to check out. Yeah. Even in LA, you know, I've been here my whole life. Yeah. And there's just always like a new spot, and a new place, and a new this. And yeah. That's fine. All the PCH, Malibu Canyons. Yeah, yeah. The Rock Store, the Rock Inn. Uh, the, have you been to any of the spots? I've been I've been to the, yeah, the, the Rock. Um, rock Store. Rock Store, yep. Yeah, yeah, been Malibu. there. Uh, when I lived out here. So I did quite a bit when I used to live out here riding-wise. Um, I just, I guess, that was just so long ago, so I want to, like, relive the, the memories and, you know, look at it with a different set of eyes. Yeah. yeah. I think we also underestimated how much that trip that we did took yeah. out of us. I mean, we were doing between 200 and 380 miles a, a day. A day, yeah. yeah uh, getting, getting into the motel, staying one night, getting up at, like, between 5.30 and 6.00. Yeah. In the road again, hitting it hard. Hours, like yeah. five, six hours a day, all the way through to Sturgis, and then yeah. Sturgis was three days. <laughs> yeah, relaxing. Yeah, yeah. drinking. Yeah, relaxing. No in Sturgis. riding. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no riding. No, yeah. <laughs> spas. Yeah, and then pedicure. Straight pedicure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, um, and reading the Bible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Definitely no strippers. What? what the <laughs> hell? In, in Sturgis? Yeah. This time again? No. Uh, well, none no. in the room. Yeah. <laughs> um, Let me see. I think one of these. <laughs> one of these. <laughs> 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 no. And then, uh, and then, we left a day early to head back, and then we, again hit it hard. Yeah. We did 350 miles each day. Yeah. And then got got to Boulders, got to Denver, yeah, and then ten days then Denver straight to the airport, yeah. straight here, and I think. <laughs> yeah, when we got here, we realized like ten cool. days of solid like so flying because we when we landed and here, landed at like I think twelve at night, went straight uh, to the club with our mates. So we've just been on it from day one That's for ten cool. days. I mean, it's been incredible. But your body eventually gets to a point where it's just like, okay, I need to just stop for a little bit. Yeah, take a break. <laughs> yeah. What complications did you guys run into? Any? Okay, so that's actually <laughs> brilliant. So when we he my sister says you must watch out for him. He's a nervous traveler. I'm like. Oh. What is it? He's a grown ass man. What does he need to be nervous about? Yeah. And he goes, No, no, for some a reason. Nervous traveler. Yeah. Never heard that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, yeah. uh, So she says, Just watch out for him. So I'm like, Okay, whatever. And uh, so he <laughs> says, Yeah, for some reason, they always pick me out a lineup. I was like, What do you mean they pick you out a lineup? So like, cool. So we fly like in. A police lineup? Line yeah. yeah, that sounds, that sounds, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds bad. Yo, no, not a police lineup. Okay, not a police like, lineup, but. I get picked on. We'll stop beating people up. Yeah, you know? exactly. Stop making crimes. I always get picked on. Yeah. <laughs> By customs, by I don't know what it is, but continue. With yeah, the story. so we wrote. So we it's not a police lineup. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'd rather be calling a police lineup than the airport. I don't know. Like, yeah, I can go TSA, so many ways. Yeah. yeah like, yeah, that's oh. no jokes. Um, so we there now, everything landed and everything went smoothly. Flight was all right. <laughs> yeah. 
Now we're standing at Doha. At Doha. So we're still connecting to fly to, right, to, to, to your yeah. airline. So we're halfway there. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Everything's cool. Um, now we're standing there. As we're going to check in to board the plane, this guy all nicely kitted out, super friendly in a suit. Um, he's like, hey, are you Jason? Like, very nice. He's like, yeah, I am. So we're thinking like, shit, is this like going to bump us up I first class? Think, or do something? I recognize him? Yeah. Do I know him from somewhere? Like, did we win something? Super like, friendly. Super friendly. And then just suddenly pulls him aside. And then you take on because I mean grills me. <laughs> yeah, so he's like walks up to me. He's like, "Hey, you Jason?" I said, Sorry, he said, "You Jason?" I'm like, yeah. And like, it was like so like weird, and he's got a mask on. Oh, I'm gonna see if I can do this. Wait. Oh wait. <laughs> no one happens. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Zone. And then he pulls me aside. And then he pulls him the, aside out of the queue. <laughs> and he's got a s- phone, and he's looking at. I well, got my picture or something on there. And then he's like grilling me. He's like, what are your intentions in South Dakota? Now we booked to fly to LA, LA, Denver. There's yeah. no mention of South Dakota. Where's <laughs> the connection to South Dakota? So I don't know if they're following our social media or, you know, because we posted, we go to Sturges. And That's a lot of social media to follow. So <laughs> I don't know what it was. I was like, what the fuck? Um, so I'm like, well, we're going to be riding bikes. We're riding to... We're flying to LA and then we fly to Denver and then we're riding bikes through Wyoming to Sturgis. He says, what's Sturgis? I said, it's like a bike rally. Ah, do you, do you have a bike gang? No. Are you affiliated with anyone from Hells Angels? No. Do you know anyone from Hells Angels? No. There's a lot. Do you, <laughs> do you, do you uh, so you don't even ride with the hogs? I'm like, no. <laughs> oh, sorry, he says, what bike do you own? So I said, I've got a Harley. Oh, so you don't even ride with the hogs? No, I'm a bit of a lone wolf. Oh. The Harley Hunter Group hogs? Yes. <laughs> like, like, well, what is... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, he just like, keeps on nailing me. And he's like... Um, and then he says, oh, I see you were a crew member. I worked on the, on the QB2 for a year in, in the pastry kitchen. Where the fuck did he so see this? He says, because uh, you got a C1 whatever visa yeah. for American um, port. Like, yeah. He's like, he still asked me all these randoms. And then he's like, cool, okay, enjoy your trip. Then he walks me back to the queue and says to the lady, he's good to go. And she's got this clipboard of names. And she scratches my name off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so he obviously passed. So it wasn't <laughs> random. It was like <laughs> It was on a list. This, yeah. is, this is the thing. And I think, what uh. the fuck? What do I, what oh. do so I what really happened is, is Alex put a piece of paper on your back. It says, pick on me. <laughs> yeah. This is the high school I always went to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So always yeah. Something, was a something always oh. goes wrong. Uh. I don't know what it is. And now in my head, I'm like, I see him because now they put him to the side. I'm like, so if now you think you know worst of case course, scenario, like of course, do I, I just I still I gotta leave him. Yeah, exactly. I gotta leave him. I can't fucking wait. Yeah, I've paid all yeah. this money. Like he'll Maybe be all right. He'll be okay. Ticket, yeah, yeah. 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 they'll just send me home from Dallas. <laughs> that yeah. you have to pay for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that's fucking crazy. But, but you know what that is, right? That's the law of attraction. That's that same fucking concept of yeah. law of attraction. If you're like, fuck, man, today's gonna be a shitty day. Yeah. It's gonna be a shitty day. It's gonna be a shitty day. Get a shitty. Guess what? It's gonna be a, a shitty, shitty day. day. Yeah. You know, they're gonna pick on me. They're gonna pick on me. They're, pick, they're gonna pick on you. But when I got to LA, it was all good. Yeah. Well, See, I, I went. Like, this is such a insignificant, you know, story. But my favorite knife in the whole world that I had for almost 15 years. Somehow I had it in my backpack and I went into LAX and I went uh, through security and I was on the plane and I was like, do, 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 do. And I opened up my bag and I'm like, oh, fuck, the fucking knife is here. Like, how the fuck did yeah. this, how did this happen? <gasps> you know, like, okay, instant okay, panic. okay, okay, instant panic, whatever. I'm on the plane, done. They I, didn't pick it up at I, all. N- nothing. <laughs> Nothing, like fucking nothing. In the meantime, they're like beating up somebody else for having like a plastic knife. <laughs> yeah. you know, here I have an actual knife, right? <laughs> I'm in Mexico now. Now I have to come back. And now I'm like, oh man, maybe I should ship my knife because, you know, like they're going to fucking see it. And then my friend's like, ah, oh, they're Mexicans, you know, they don't fucking know. <laughs> like, they don't care, yeah. you know? They find my knife and fucking take it. Oh. And that was the last time I saw my knife. Damn. <laughs> you know, so like, but, 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 but my point was, I wasn't thinking about any because I didn't know. Yeah. Yes. When I went when there. And then on the way back, I'm like, I'm thinking they're going to take my knife. Yeah. And of course, knife. you make the phone call. I told you they're going to take my knife, you know. So, but that, that shit is real, you know, that that's e- even this microphone. 
somebody visualized this microphone before it was even fucking created yeah. and then executed and figured out how it was going to work and when it was going to work. Like it's, 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 it's amazing. The mind is amazing. Yeah. And I've been talking about this a lot too and it fucks with you. You know, it, it fucks with you. Your mind's like, don't travel. It, it, that, that flying's not fun. Get some rest. Stop writing. Just, just relax. You know, you don't have to, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yep, exactly. That's the mind. Tomorrow. <laughs> and then the mind's the same thing that at the end of the day says, you bitch. You didn't do it. You yep. stayed home. You're fucking, what the fuck's wrong with you? You know, so it, it, it's, it, it's, it's hard to be human. Yeah. My conclusion. You know, a functional human in society following all these laws and rules and making everybody happy. And yeah, acceptably functional. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's another thing I learned, that in America they don't like gangs. <laughs> yeah. Clubs. But yeah. you know what's funny? Do you know who the biggest gang and mafia is in the world? The U.S. government. You owe them money, they'll take your freedom. Yeah. You owe them money, they'll take your house, your car. They're, oh, they're the biggest mob in the whole wide world. The U.S. government. It's crazy. And yeah. nobody can fuck with them. No. <laughs> nobody yeah. can fuck with them. Play by their fucking rules and their rules only. The big dick of the law. That's right. The big swinging <laughs> dick, you know. Is it big now? <laughs> it's fucking a lot of countries, my friend. That, 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 the U.S. The US cock is, is well known around the world. And people are begging for that cock. They're like, bring it over here. <laughs> Just on my head. Just like fucking st- whatever you want. Bust you know? your steps. <laughs> So, but we covered a lot. Is uh, we're almost at an hour. Is there anything you guys want to add, or you know, for sure, I want to get your websites and your yeah. Instagrams and where everybody finds you. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to ask you real quick on the side note: uh, Have you been to Porto's Bakery? Porto's. Porto's Bakery. No, I did go to Clark Street Bakery. Okay, I haven't been there. That's pretty good. Is it? Um, but Porto's is amazing. Is it? I'll send you the history. It's okay, a Cuban perfect. bakery. It's right. a Cuban oh, bakery. Okay, amazing. With, uh, with uh, some French influence, which is Cuban bakery, but yes. uh, you know, it came from you know, French. Um, Whereabouts is it? There's one in Burbank. There's one in Glendale. There's one in Downey. There's a few of them. Okay. Uh, and then I just saw a buddy of mine. He's going to be on the podcast soon. He does all the history of L.A. Oh, amazing. He just did a, a review on Portos and the family and the story, but the, the place is fucking always packed. Sure. Always sure. packed. And you're running out of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. The only advantage is they open up early. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, social media and websites. Uh, yeah, so stuscustoms.com is our website. And then uh, our hashtag, I mean, our handle is uh, stuscustoms uh, on Instagram. Very nice. Yeah. And the bakeries? Uh, jasonbakery.com. Jasonbakery.com. And jasonbakeryct. And, and what kind of Instagram? What, and and what, what kind of, uh, what kind of um, style? Or so it's artisan. Artisan style, artisan. no bullshit. Um, sourdoughs, sourdough breads. Takes us three days to make the breads. And then fucking love sourdough. Uh, and laminate, then laminated is, pastries. You gotta talk about your yeast. That's that. Uh, oh, Henry. So our sourdough starter is he's sixteen years old now. His name is Henry. <laughs> and then his sister is Jessica, who I named after a stripper because the first bakery <laughs> we opened was right next to a strip club. Very and nice. We used to start work at three a.m. in the morning, and they were just finishing up. So they would come and talk shit with us, and while we were Eat making bread. the breads, and yeah. and Jessica was a hottie, and uh, <laughs> so that's how that makes so much Jessica sense. Jessica got yeah. her name. And um, yeah, that was that was fifteen years ago. <laughs> yeah, so it's all clean product. It's uh, you know we um, honor the the product, try and use as much organic product as possible, um, and no bullshit, no additives, no enzymes, no 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 crap. Right. Um, we keep it clean, but we are peddling gluten, sugar, and fat. Butter. Yeah. So we're like the, like the Coke dealers of the of the bakery, That's the cake dealers, <laughs> <laughs> the cake dealers. <laughs> yeah, because everyone's gluten. Did you bring any flour with you on this trip? Sorry, did you bring any flour with you on this trip? No, no, no wink, no, wink. No, no, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Little bags. No. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about that. I definitely would have got pulled over. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> what is that? Well, it's sure. definitely flour. It's <laughs> that would only work if you put something in your bag you didn't know about. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. Supplies. Yeah. Surprise, yeah. got you. <laughs> yeah. So, so that that's what we do. So we were the, uh, could definitely say the pioneer of artisan baking in Cape Town. And the one nice thing about South Africa is that it's, 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 there's not a lot of people, there's not a lot of competition. And if you're really good at what you do, you stand out. You get known. And you can be a pioneer in what you do. Like Alex is a pioneer in what he does. I'm the pioneer in what I do. And then you've got the guys following. 
yeah um, which is which is a great thing i mean here i'll just be another bakery right or maybe not but one way to here, find here, out yeah, yeah here here are the food the food's a little different but there's so many communities that you you would be the bakery of that community for yes. sure yeah you know um but th- there's just there's just so many fucking consumers here. That's the thing. Is like, uh, yeah, you just create, and you know, what you, if you, you can, you, you can, you can sell shit. Yeah. And I was like, I, like this was a, a, a thought that my grandfather had. He's like, you could sell shit. And I go, what do you, what are you saying? He's like, you can grab shit, dry it out in the sun, pound it down to dust, and put it in a fucking Ziploc bag, and be like, shit for sale. Just the curious people of like, is that really fucking shit? Pay a dollar and find out. Let me yeah. see that. <laughs> man, this is shit, man. This is fucking gross. You know, just those people. Yeah. I guess that's anywhere, but there's just more of them here. Exactly. Yeah. That, that they'll buy shit. And they'll then you shit. also hold back the, the demand or the supply. Yeah. And then the demand will be more like, that guy's selling shit, but he never has any. <laughs> so let me, let me see if I can pull this It'll up. It'll be accused. Th- this, was, this was ridiculous. This was, I just sent this to somebody. This was fucking gross. Um, it's not gross. Obviously, it, it had to be fake. Like, there, there was no truth to it. But, but it makes you think. I think it's this one. Let me see. Okay, let me see if this plays. Oh. I told you that that patty is a... Okay. What if I told you that that patty is 100% human shit? No way. <laughs> That's insane. That's insane. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Still eating. Still I've well, never ate shit before. <laughs> 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 it's dog shit, though, right? No, it's human shit. It's dog shit, no. <laughs> I can text another bite. Is this, this one, too? Yeah. Shit, uh, shit. Shit, 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 human shit. Oh, I gotta try this now. I gotta try this now. Shit. Wow. It's perfect. Uh, try the new shit burger today. What if I told you? <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. You know, actually, probably made a lot of money on that. Oh, I'm sure this thing had to get. Let's see how many views. I mean, if it's I already 140,000 likes. Oh. You know, but it, it just goes to show you that, like, a- anything you can create, shit sells. Shit so literally sells. Maybe I must create more of a shitty show on YouTube. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> by the way, your episode just ended, sponsored by the shit burger. Yeah. The human shit burger. <laughs> Well, thank you, gentlemen. I, I appreciate you guys for, com- for coming. I thank you thank for you. being here. This yeah, was fucking for... ex- great experience. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I will definitely see you soon when you come here or when I go out there. Yeah, well, there's a few bikes waiting for you when you come to South Africa. I, I appreciate that. And our roads aren't as bad as yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to you guys. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you.